Subject, subject, what is it today? What have we got? Speaking of the subject. Ay, ay, ay. So, um, Jan, I found a couple of your uh, things online that I don't think I've even begun to adequately respond to. And I'm going to try to do both of them as one. I might be making a mistake, so I'm going to do them separately. And then I'm, I'm sorry, I said that I'm going to do them as one. I'm going to try to do them both today. I may not be able to. But if uh, they are so related that I may go to both of them, okay? Depending on how fast I do for the first one. Now, we, I know we've addressed this one a little bit, and I don't think I've just addressed it adequately because when I found it in the comments, I was, um, I was very, um, you know, I was thinking, did I really? That's a good one to respond to. So here it is. Um, when a Boston School painter who specialized in figures, such as Paxton, started a painting, didn't Paxton use the academic outline to set the figures up? I can actually see the line in one or two of his paintings. Landscape, I can see how that could that how this would be helpful. And he's talking about my talking about painting from effects, I think she is. Not to draw too much first. Hunter Douglas, and she means Douglas Hunter, I should have said that. Uh, Robert Douglas Hunter also drew the still lives, didn't he? No drawing? I would find this very difficult. And that's Jan. Now I, the one thing I didn't bring you, I'll try to put it online, is one of my own paintings that I did without outlines, and it's the portrait of my daughter. Um, I call it Chloe in the Sky with Diamonds. It's a pastel, and I, it's very, as it were at the end, outliney. and you would probably conclude that I had made it from outlines because it looks like that. One of the beauties of the way I work is that I can end with it looking with, with, with a finessed outline, or I can end with a, uh, you know, with a lost and found uh, visual impression uh, uh, unity. Um, but that's a pushing and pushing and pushing. You can get to more and more. Not that it's more of a likeness to have outlines, but you wind up with more lines of the, of the subplot level uh, if you choose to. Um, and if the method is a good one, it should be good for both. In other words, it's my method, I use outdoors and indoors. So I get what you're saying and why you're thinking that. Now, this, the thing you are saying, and I don't have a... I'll, I'll put a Paxton on the screen too. I'll put some of these things side by side so you can look at them. With, so we can look at them together. But there's no question in my mind that Paxton was working more like an academic. In fact, the only start that we have by him, that one was grabbed off the uh, easel, as we are told by, a, um, by the, the uh, head of the uh, art department at, at the MFA school that he was still teaching at the time, um, uh, looks like it probably was. In other words, there's way too much attention to stuff that any the other guys would have considered uh, uh, secondary. And I mean, like literally, very low contrast pillows on couches. Are, you can see the, where the shapes end. Uh, the thing is in visual order apart from that, though. And so he's a guy who's managing with uh, having set up with outline, much like his ap academic training would have done for him. Uh, and then uh, managing to, to make, make sure that he paid attention to the visual order, which I, th I suspect he gained from uh, conversations with... Uh, uh, Joseph de Camp, probably as much as anybody. We know that he did have some lengthy uh, res um, or some extended conversations, if not actual critiques, from um, Joseph de Camp. Uh, so, um, but I want to show you these these drawings here that we do know were done from outlines. And I only say this, by the way, to say it's self-evident. Of course, a bunch of these were done from outlines. I think in the case of um, of, of Vermeer. And I'm sorry this isn't a better uh, image, and I'm hoping I can get it to be not glary for you. I still have enough light. But all of Vermeer's look like they were done from outlines. I mean, I simply do. And in fact, the, uh, in the background of one of them is some images of another painting, and it looks like it was outlined in and masked probably the way he would have worked, putting a, a simplified mass in, which is very close to the way we worked with Gamel. So, but then, on the other hand, you also have Bouguereau. Bouguereau, in every single one of these, and I'm only showing these little ones, so they're not overwhelming us, uh, but you can see that each one of these things is a pure, is, is all entirely based on cutouts and, and the modeling between the, um, you know, bet on the, between, the, between the edges of the contour. So he's, this guy is actually making a woman and making her hair mask, making this, making that, and modeling it. Uh, but he's doing it absolutely from the outline. Same thing is true of this, very obviously. Some of them so, so obvi painfully obvious. One of them, you can see the sort of reason why that might exist, for example, in this one right here, providing I can get enough light on it. This one here is a, rather a mural. It has the outlines still show, care almost like they're being carefully shown 
to give the thing a sense of flatness, which is part of the strategies of those days. But you can see that everything Bougro does is outline-based. Now, with that in your hand, with that in my hand, so to speak, you can look at this sergeant here and just see how, how categorically it isn't. So this is a figure painting, and I've showed it to you before. And here I think you should be able to plainly see that this is not done from it making an outline of an object. It's done from effects. Now, by the way, this is my copy uh, uh, of, of, a, uh, of that, of that uh, oyster gatherers, uh, one of the figures from the oyster gatherers. But these are plainly in two different classes of critter, right? So this is much more like the Boston School. That's why when I do those videos, I talk about Sargent and the Boston School. There's so many similarities in terms of painting from the visual order, for example. This isn't painted from the visual order. It's painted from the outline of objects. If there's visual order, it's it's because he, they glue it on afterwards. And I'm saying that even fact about, or, or in the case of, perhaps of Paxton, he would have incorporated it earlier. I will try to put, if I can, these things on the um, uh, uh, images out here so you don't have to look at them here, but I'm not taking any chances. Now, here's a, a painting by, um, and this is a close-up section of a painting by Joseph de Camp, which if you're thinking like it sounds like you might be, it looks like it's a figure, right? And it's very articulately drawn. But you can plainly see how he put down paint on this one. And there's definitely sections where there are blobs, and they're isolated blobs, which he's obviously put down at different times because of their relationships to different things, different places in the picture. And all I can say to you is you can get to the same level of articulation. What I like about the Boston School, say, compared with the um, world of, of, the, um, of the, I'm going to call it the old realism, what actually Velasquez referred, I mean, Stevens in, Stevenson in his book on Velasquez referred to it as primitive, that primitive way of working. But the difference is uh, uh, that these all look like, kind of, they look like pictures of people in a sense like that, rather than looking like slice of life. They have this feeling of being cutouts. And there's a very different mindset. As I say, I just, if I could show you some of these sort of simultaneously all the way through here, I better show you the other side of this. But they don't have the same sense of a presence in the world. You know, the envelope, all those sorts of discussions you have, they look, you can plainly see those are two different categories of animals. So I'll try to put some pictures up on the screen for you to deal with that. Now, um, that's the quick answer to that one. Uh, I think I'll leave it at that. I think I'll give you a different review. I'm going to do it right now, but I'm going to make it a different video, okay? So I want you to sub subscribe, uh, comment, uh, uh, like, and share all these, this video as well. It's, this is all really important information if you're trying to be a representational painter. Uh, and I'm going to then pick up uh, the second question at this, this related, but not enough related as I conclude now. And this one's long enough. So let's just go with this one. This is probably the shortest one I've done so far. All right, see you next time. And the next time is gonna be right now, I'm not even changing clothes. <laughs> so if you see another video with me wearing this shirt, it's me and I'm here now.